الله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد الأمين ومسك الختام لسائر الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعد Dearest brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode in which we are trying to build our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is a great opportunity for us to strengthen our relationship with Allah. But this will be very much dependent on how we utilize our time. Are we able to use our time effectively and efficiently? You see many people in the month of Ramadan, we see them not using their time appropriately, not using their time accordingly. We don't want to be amongst those people. Perhaps this Ramadan could be the last Ramadan within my life. There were many brothers and sisters that we had around us last Ramadan, but they are no longer with us. Many of them who have passed away. Many of them we have lost due to COVID and other illnesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and you another opportunity. We want to make sure we're making the best out of our time, especially in the month of Ramadan. You see, the month of Ramadan is different from any other months. The reward is greater than any other months. Only a foolish person would not use their time effectively and efficiently. Brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla has given us time as the most valuable asset in the life of this world. Allah chose us as Muslims, He chose us as Ahlul Tawheed, He chose us as the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is His great mercy upon each one of us. But He will test us in the hereafter. And our success and our loss in the hereafter is very much dependent on how we use our time in the life of this world. Brothers and sisters, let us remember a second that passes within my life, a minute that passes within my life, an hour that passes within my life, a day that passes within my life, a month that pass with, passes within my life, and a year that passes within my life, that cannot be rehearsed, that cannot be repeated, that cannot be relayed once again. But that's a huge portion of my life that has disappeared. So I've got to make sure that I'm making the best out of my time because I only get one chance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps he has ordained for me 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, or even more if we're fortunate. But I've got to ensure that I am successful in the hereafter by utilizing my time accordingly and appropriately in the life of this world. Every moment that passes, I would not be able to repeat that, but it's a huge portion of my life that has disappeared. If this Ramadan passes, and then that means another whole year has passed within my life, which cannot be repeated, which cannot be rehearsed, which cannot be reversed again. But a huge fraction of my life has disappeared. I want to make sure that I'm making the best out of my time. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says, ما مضى من الدنيا أحلام وما بقي منها أماني والوقت ضائع بينهما ما مضى من الدنيا أحلام the time that has passed within my life, it was like a dream. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years has passed within my life so rapidly, so quickly. It felt like I went to sleep and all of a sudden I woke up. This is how it felt like all of those years that went past so quickly. And this is why Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, when he spoke about the life of this world compared to the akhirah, what did he say? He said, the life of this world is like a man who goes to sleep and he has this beautiful dream. All of a sudden he wakes up and he wakes up to reality and he realizes all it was, it was a dream. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Ya Ibn Adam, what are you? Illa ayyam. You are nothing except a few days. Kullama dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'duka. Every time a day passes, remember, a portion of your life has disappeared. We've got to make sure that we're using our time effectively and efficiently because time is running out. And I am heading towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, مَا مَضَى مِنَ الدُّنْيَا أَحْلَامٌ The life of this world, brothers and sisters, it's like a short dream that we are all experiencing. وَمَا بَقِيَ مِنْهَا amani. The time that is remaining, I am hopeful. I have good thought about my Lord, inshallah, the time that Allah has ordained for me, preordained for me. I'm going to exhaust all my energy. I'm going to exhaust all my effort in trying to 
strengthen my relationship with Allah Jalla wa Ala. Wal waqtu da'i'un baynahuma. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says, and the time that is remaining is rapidly disappearing. The time that I have remaining is rapidly disappearing. I've got to ensure that I have a comprehensive plan within my life. Any person who has attained success in life, brothers and sisters, it is because they have a plan within their life. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. This is a well-known statement that if you don't have a comprehensive plan in life, where are you heading? What are you doing? You don't have no direction. You don't have no goals. You don't have any plans. Then that is a recipe for disaster. You want to ensure that you have a plan. What is our plan? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love to meet that person. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us amongst those people that love to meet Allah. And may Allah make us amongst those people that Allah loves to meet us. Allahumma amin. Brothers and sisters, we're only able to attain the pleasure of our maker, our creator, Allah Jalla Shanuhu, when we use our time effectively and efficiently. Let us not forget the life of this world is a place of investment for the hereafter. The more energy you exhaust, the more effort you invest in the life of this world, your success will be greater in the hereafter. The greater the sacrifice in the life of this world, the greater the achievements in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, you can only be foolish. You can only be foolish to give up your akhirah for the life of this world. As the ulama, they said, Ashaddu anwa al khasara an takuna al jannah. The greatest type of loss is that Jannah, that the width of Jannah is so big like the earth and the sky. However, there is no space for you in Jannah. May Allah protect us. But Allah created such a big place, which is Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us the size, the width of Jannah in the Quran in different positions. Why is he telling us the size of Jannah? Because he wants us to attain Jannah. But Jannah is only attained through sacrifice, using your time effectively, efficiently, not using your time in mere rejoicement and play without purpose. Because Allah Jalla created us with a purpose. And that is to use this temporary place of abode to be successful in the hereafter. Let us not give up our akhirah for this dunya. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, كَيْفَ يَكُونُ عَاقِلًا مَنْ بَاعَ الْجَنَّةِ بِشَحْوَةِ السَّاعَةِ How does a man consider himself to be intelligent? How does a man consider himself to be wise? How does a person consider themselves to be clever when they gave up their jannah trying to attain a peace in the life of this world? This place, this temporary place of abode, is a place to invest for the hereafter. الدنياء دار عمل this dunya is a place for us to push ourselves, go above and beyond, go that extra mile, doing good deeds, doing all of those things that Allah loves, being obedient to Allah, following the way of his Habib Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, when we stand before Allah, that is the day Allah will reward each one of us the person who doesn't invest in the life of this world, they will be in a state of severe regret in the hereafter. The month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, it's an opportunity for us to attain the pleasure of Allah. It is a month where the shaitan are tied up. It is a month that Allah Jalla wa ala showers his servants with his mercy. This is the time for us to use our time effectively, efficiently, so that we can be successful in the hereafter. Our Lord, Allah Jalla wa ala, will be pleased with us. But it's very unfortunate that even in this very month, the month of Ramadan, we find many people wasting their time, especially on social media. Now that social media has become inseparable from our lives, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and all of those social media platforms, to some extent, they have become part and parcel of our life that many of us, we are on social media, we don't even realize we're on social media. We're subconsciously using social media 
because of the addiction that a person is using more than three hours a day of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all different social media platforms. Even in the month of Ramadan, we see many of our brothers and sisters, many of them who even come to the masjid to pray Taraweeh, they're on their phone, on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media. Is that more important than your prayer? Is that more important than your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many people are so addicted that they are on YouTube watching one video after one video after another video and they realize hours and hours and hours have passed and at the end of it you have not achieved anything except that you have wasted all your time. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. We don't want to stand before Allah and when all of our deeds are presented to us, then on our book, our record, all we see is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, last logged in, last logged out. That is not what we want to stand before Allah Jalla wa ala with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. In the month of Ramadan, let us strengthen our relationship with the Quran. Let us be frequent in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us keep our tongue moistened with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially the adhkar, the tasbih, dhikr, takbir, tahleel, tahmeed, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, al-azim, allahu akbar kabira, astaghfirullah, inna allaha ghafoorur rahim, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, rabbi ghfirli wa tub alayya, inna ka anta tawabur rahim. All of these beautiful adhkar can be found in Hisnul Muslim. Make that your partner, not Facebook, not Instagram, not Twitter. All of these platforms can be beneficial if you use it accordingly and appropriately, but not in the month of Ramadan, give it a break. Spend more time worshipping Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that will bring you success. Your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, and other platforms won't bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're not using it accordingly and appropriately. So in the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, let us ensure that we're using our time effectively and efficiently. Brothers and sisters, take a moment and think. How many seconds are there within a 24-hour period? If I ask you that question, how many of you can answer that immediately? Who can give me a rapid response? There are 86,400 seconds within a 24-hour period. Take a moment and think about that. Within a 24-hour period, Allah has blessed us with 86,000 seconds. How long does it take to say Subhanallah? How long does it take to say Alhamdulillah? How long does it take to say Allahu Akbar? A second or two. How many times have we said Subhanallah today? How many times have we said Alhamdulillah today? How many times have we said Allahu Akbar today? Brothers and sisters, let us keep our tongue moistened with the remembrance of Allahu Jalla wa Ala. Afdalu dhikri, la ilaha illallah. The best dhikr remembrance of Allah is saying la ilaha illallah. Let us use our tongue to remember Allah. Let us ensure that we are busy worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And since the month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an, we want to ensure that we're spending a lot of our time with the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, doing khatam of the Qur'an, looking at the translation of these verses that we read on a regular basis. And those of us who are memorizing surahs push ourselves to learn more surahs. In addition to all of this, let us spend more time learning uh, supplications, invocations, especially those that we use in our prayer. And this is how we're going to use our time effectively and efficiently, bi ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla wa ala, He says in the Qur'an, uh, regarding our life in this dunya, and we're going back to the very statement that we mentioned in the very beginning of our program, that this is our temporary place of abode. And we want to invest all of our time uh, in, in the life of this world so we can be successful in the hereafter. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَ Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, He says that He created us after our mother and father, they had physical relationship. It is because of this physical relationship we came to this dunya nutfa. Min nutfatin khalaqahu faqaddara. And then Allah preordained for us our destiny. How long we are going to live? 
What are all of the events that are going to occur in the life of this world? Allah Jalla wa Ala had preordained all of that for us. Min nutfatin khalaqahu faqaddara. Thumma sabila yassara. And he brought us to the life of this world. Thumma amatahu faqaddara. And then we will have to leave this temporary place of abode. And our real journey begins. We are buried and our akhirah begins. Our everlasting life begins. Thumma idha sha'a and shara. Then we will be raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we are raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, we want to be raised in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with each one of us. Let us not misuse our time, the most valuable asset that we have, because every breath that I release, a portion of my life has disappeared. And I will not be able to change that anymore. I would not be able to repeat that anymore. So I've got to make sure that every step of my life, and as I move forward, as I get older, I am using my time effectively and efficiently. Take a moment and think how rapidly time is disappearing for our lives. And this is a sign of qiyamah, min ashrati sa'ah, from the sign of the hour, la taqumu sa'ah. The Messenger Muhammad says that the hour will not take place until time becomes very, very limited. Allahu Akbar. How quickly from one Friday to another Friday passes by. We already entered the month of Ramadan. Already many days have gone past. And you see the remaining days will rapidly disappear. Very quickly time is passing. Let us not forget it's a portion of my life that is disappearing. And I've got to really make an effort and be hasty and really go above and beyond in worshipping Allah, being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protecting myself from all of those things that will earn the displeasure of Allah, whether it's major sin, whether it's minor sin. Brothers and sisters, this valuable asset that Allah has blessed us with, let us not misuse it. Because on the day of Hisab, Allah Jalla wa Ala will question us. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم حتى يسأل عن خمس On the day of Hisab, none of us will take a step forward until we have answered five important questions. Take a moment and think about that. In another narration, we know that the very first question, أول ما يحاسب به العبد the very first question on the day of Hisab will be regarding a person's prayer. But in this hadith, we find that the companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم حتى يسأل عن خمس You're not going to take a step forward until you have answered five fundamental questions. Number one, عن عمره فيما أفنى وعن شبابه فيما أبلى وعن ماله من أين اكتسب وفيما أنفقه All of these questions we will have to answer. The very first question is عن عمره فيما أفنى This life that Allah has given you, whether it's 60 or 65 years, because the Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says أعمار أمتي ما بين الستين إلى السبعين That the average age of my ummah is between 60 and 70. If Allah has blessed you with 60 years, he will ask you, what did you do with those 60 years? Did you spend your time in obedience to Allah? Or was you too busy chasing the dunya? Was you too busy following the way of shaitan? Was you too busy beautifying this temporary place of abode as opposed to your everlasting life? These questions will be asked to each one of us and we're not going anywhere until we have answered those questions. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wal tanzuru nafsum ma qaddamat lighad wa attaqullaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Oh, you who believe, focus, realize, and think about what you are doing in the life of this world. That will be the reason for your success in the hereafter. What are you sending towards your akhirah? What good deeds are you doing for the hereafter? after that will make you successful from the moment that you close your eyes. We want to leave a legacy behind brothers and sisters that people make dua for us. We want to be remembered even after we have departed from the life of this world. People raise their hands and they make dua for us. This is how we want to touch the hearts and the minds of people. That is a life worthy of living. That is a worth life worthy of living. That a person was given 60, 70 years and they spent that time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, we fail to understand the value of time. Many of us fail to understand the importance of time. 
and years and years have passed within our life and we have achieved nothing. We haven't made any effort to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those of us who are listening, let us from this very moment make a proactive effort to bring change within our lives, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, so much so that Allah jalla wa ala is pleased with us. We don't want to be in a state of regret in the hereafter. Like the people that Allah jalla wa ala says, those that were given time, the disbelievers will be in a state of regret. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَعَصَوُ الرَّسُولِ لَوْ تُسَوَّى بِهِمُ الْأَرْضِ Those that denied Allah and those who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would say, لَوْ تُسَوَّى بِهِمُ الْأَرْضِ they would say, what, what if we could be demolished and destroyed and if we could be mixed with the soil as if we did not exist? Why? Because they will be in a state of regret. We don't want to be in that state. We want to be in a state where we are happy in the hereafter. Why? Because we used our time effectively and efficiently in the life of this world, brothers and sisters. And this means from right here, right now, those who are watching this program, let us ensure moving forward that we are using our time uh, effectively and efficiently in every aspect of our life. And most importantly, when it comes to my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to ibadah, every moment should be spent in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every moment should be spent attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a life worthy of living. A believing man or a believing woman who values time and they use their time for the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They use their time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a successful person. That is a person who will be happy. That will be a person who will rejoice in the hereafter. May Allah jalla wa ala make us amongst the people who value time and who really appreciate all of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them and the greatest of bounty that Allah has given us in the life of this world he has chosen us to be Muslim and after that he has given us time as a great blessing so that we can attain success in the hereafter moving forward let us ensure that we go above and beyond push ourselves when it comes to pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah give all of us the tawfiq until our next program assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh